Well, that was an interesting bug. Apparently, there's many quite many bases on. the occupants left in a hurry hopefully for no reason we need to be concerned about mm. so it's a, it's an old base but not not uh, old enough to be from the diaspora era right Stress reduction procedure. Bang head here. <laughs> First test loss of Project Prism. Eastern Daylight Time. Okay, so this is old enough to be from the Diaspora era. Voltaire is hiding property on his supercomputer. They're launching, launching a supercomputer to space. Okay, it, it, it could be leading me out. But I wonder if we can. No, said there's there's something on the roof apparently. Okay, so it's, it is a Jupiter probe. Counting down in five, four, three, two, one. Canaveral, are you reading? All clear, Nova. Indicators look good. The ship should be cruising Jupiter's orbit right now. Visual confirmation will be possible in <laughs> 32 minutes. Minutes. Afraid the speed of light is on the slow side these days. <laughs> How does it feel to break the laws of physics, Canaveral? We're all pretty excited down here in NASA, I won't lie. Excited enough to tell me where you got the original data? Not in a million years. So how did they come up with the faster than light? Travel, we got some code. That wasn't wasn't explained previously. to the earth. Yep. 
Yeah, it's it's gravity drive. And all the artifacts and temples are using gravity. Basically gravity gravitons. Maybe Starborn have something to do with it. But yeah, yeah. I wouldn't say that this is totally surprising. Ships clear, the skies usually, usually Bethesda games are pretty class classical in their in their plot lines. So they try to get the surprise element here. Pattern locked. Easy. Okay, camera was un unlocked for some, some reason. Houston. All clear. Time to land this ship. Yeah, it looks like a east coast of the United States. somewhere I mean that that shouldn't happen even even if the earth would lose its uh, magnetic field it it would still take time to vanish when it the um, atmosphere to be blown away actually doing here to think that towers like this were once absolutely essential to ensuring our survival and now here they are, buried and forgotten. So we are not probably get getting inside of that ship. Perhaps an elevator will allow us to access what lies beneath all this dust. Very convenient jumping puzzle here. We can never know whether lives were lost because this ship never launched, but it was built for a reason. Reminder. This work would not have been done if the ship had not meant to launch. Nuclear fuel rod. I think you may be trying to take a little too much on. You think? Literally. The power cell. Okay.
Okay, I put put every loot here, so it it won't slow me down. This room probably never could have imagined all that has happened since it was built. It, yeah, interesting fact is that they had like... Well, of, of course this is game development. Game developers use the same assets all over. But if this is like 300 years old technology, they had like everything from airlocks ready when, when the people left the left Earth. Yeah, computers too. Next one long, she's needed to be cancelled. Station log. Dr. Judith Tatien. The recent delivery from Mars is unsettling. I was expecting rock samples or maybe fossils of microbial life. Instead, Dr. Victor Isa comes with two members of the military. Everything they have brought back is under wraps. What could a theoretical physicist need with a sample from Mars? Station log. Dr. Judith Tatien. I have been trying to cause you up to Dr. Isa, Victor, to see what is going on. His team has completely commandeered one of the labs with those two military hand refs, checking who comes in and out. I joked that maybe he found a little grey man who was doing an autopsy, and he grew very pale. Two days later, he sends me a request asking for more information on my background in material science, metallurgical engineering. Oh, we have a meeting tomorrow. I... I think I'm being invited into the lab. Station log. Dr. Judith Satien. I have... Never been so nervous since I defended my dissertation. Four hours talking to Victor and his team about theoretical metals, atomic bonding, even a half hour divergence into magnetism that I'm pretty sure was just to throw me off the trail of what we were actually talking about. Then I got to see the lab. I. I don't know how much I should say, but the periodic table just got thrown out the window. Okay, so they found something from the Mars. What's Rock doing in the launch tower? I mean, seriously. It would seem there is more here to explore, shall we? Okay, so this is what we saw. So I was very proud of all that it accomplished. I suppose they had a right to be. F1 engine. Yeah, of course. Most of this is looted. Okay, 2150 atmospheric phenomena. Craft drive. So, gra gravity drive for this colony ship. It's like a visitor center, basically. Pamphlet. You can actually find the lunar landing site in, in, in this. In, in, in the moon. 
at the moon. Nova Galactic. Voltaire Supercomputer. Pull gravity itself. So it, it was supercomputer that pulled the gravity. It made the gravity drive possible. Nova Galactic. It is basically a Nova Galactic technology. Which might be a like homage to the SpaceX. And this is the uh, ISS or should be. Thank you for your. I just don't understand where these calculations came from. There's something wrong with the math? I think it's quite straightforward. That's not what I'm asking. We've had no success extracting even a sample of material from the object. No explanation for the gravitational effects. No motion graph to explain its harmonic frequencies. I can't even establish a melting point. Judith. But you've had me building these prototype colliders for months. And now you want me to bump helium-3 into it based on this equation you've written on a goddamn napkin? I just need you to trust me. I have been trusting you. We keep slamming our heads against a brick wall, getting nothing. And you keep coming up with something new to try. Like, you know what's going to happen. Maybe he does. Where are you getting your information, Victor? I'm sorry, Judith. I... Look, not here, okay? Somewhere off base. I'll tell you everything. But I'm not lying, okay? We're going to discover something important here. I promise. Okay, so maybe... The researcher found unity. Thermos. Looks like Pardon. early testing for planetary habitats. <laughs> the looks on their faces if we could show them all that we have learned. Yeah, okay. Which, which was like... Why? <laughs> okay, this is pretty powerful. Next to the elevator. Project log. Dr. Victor Isa, we turned on the prototype today. The gravitational field around it began to fold as we long suspected. Complete reversal of gravitational pull was observed on dozens of loose objects around the lab. I'm setting up a meeting with the directors to propose a larger test. The prototype proves we don't need the original anymore. Original. But further work is going to have to take place in space. Somewhere with abundant helium-3 and with a civilian partner. Someone with access to large-scale manufacturing resources and computational equipment. Engineering gravitational folds pulling the far side of the solar system closer to us. It's all going to be possible. Project Lock, Dr. Judith Petien. I watched the Gravjet tests from the moon today. It was the first time we were able to talk to the team at Nova Galactic directly. So many things were under wraps before, but... Now everyone wants all the publicity they can get. I'm already seeing proposals for manufacturing androids of drives. Expeditions to Alpha Centauri and beyond. It's also overwhelming. And worrying. It could take years. Decades before we know what all the side effects of operating a grav drive can be. But no one wants to hear that right now. Like a bunch of pioneers racing towards the edges of the frontier without knowing about the grizzly bears in the mountains. Also, Earth's mag magnetic field was noticed to be weakening in 2150. So this is nine years before that. Interesting here. Except safe. <laughs> no propellant. Okay. Very old monopropellant.
Okay. That is the engine. I wonder if they destroyed the Earth's magnetic field. I mean, it's, it's totally possible. Okay. NASA maintenance key. Always worth checking. Never know what you might find in their pockets. That's pretty... That's really old. Policy here. We have one, another body that's glued. Pigment. Maybe I don't want to get pigment. Release artifact. Okay. Prototype drive. I never actually got to visit your labs back when we were working on the grav drive projects. Seems like ancient history now. The only thing we're doing these days is launching weather satellites. Guess this is as good a retirement as any. Now, Project Demeter, you want our help manufacturing scanners to better track these new meteorological patterns. New meteorological patterns. Our guess is that the poles might be naturally shifting, causing some gravitational fluctuations that are throwing off our old models. Why do you need the scanning tolerances to be so small? What are you trying to find? I just want to be sure. It's not like we're doing much these days anyway. The glory days are over. Why not give ourselves a challenge before they write us off in the history books? Gravity waves seem to be affecting the magnetic seal provided by the say, Earth's inner core. That's a lot of ships. Uh, Not a lot of ships. Statement. We'll need to address the entire international community. I'm sorry, Judith. There isn't a planet in this universe that will be far enough away from you, Victor. We are never speaking again after this is over. Okay. My name is Dr. Victor Isa. And if you're listening to this, then you probably already know the truth. 
I was young when I first headed the retrieval team of an odd gravitational anomaly on Mars. But I kept what really happened that day hidden from everyone except one other person. Even she didn't believe me at first. But I have no reason to lie to anyone now, so I... I hope you'll accept this confession, whoever you are. When I touched the anomaly, I experienced 12 days of lost time. I met myself. He told me everything that has since come true. The grav drive equations, the tests on the moon, Earth's atmosphere sputtering away because of what we had done. But he also told me about a city thriving on a planet orbiting a distant star. Human culture, art, music, lifestyles evolving and shining brightly across all of space. And space pirates. What price would I be willing to pay for that future? Maybe you don't believe me. Maybe Judith was right and I'm just a coward who wants to believe his mistakes were justified. But everyone has forgotten about the real origins of the grav drive, this artifact from Mars. I hope you make better use of it than I did. Okay. We, we, we were dropped. Dropped to the floor. Of course. Constellation, we've arrived on the surface of Earth. We need to discuss what you found. And it looks like other starborn got here before us. So, you might have company. He has not a nice weapon, by the way. I cannot wait to see you. Run home. Very well. now why I asked you to come here. The artifacts unlocked the secret of interstellar travel at the cost of Earth. An easy trade, honestly. Why have one world when you can have all the settled systems? Yep. Humans as a species are problematic because humans don't do anything un until it's, it's acute. Uh, or clear and present danger. So that's that's why the climate climate change is so hard, because you can basically deny it very long time. So that's why the rem remedies are not not really introduced. Assuming we weren't going to lose it anyway. War, disease, famine, all the classics. But we had Elon Musk <laughs> and colonies see? on Mars. The power of the artifact forced humanity to the stars. They didn't get to make a choice. How many would have chosen Earth? What gave Victor Isa the right to choose for them? You see the hypocrisy in what the emissary is saying, right? They don't want to rob people of their free will, but then they steal the artifacts for themselves. In the wrong hands, the power of the artifacts can make anyone a tyrant. That's why we watch over them. The only thing you're watching out for is yourself. <laughs> Join me, old friend. We can collect the final pieces together. Oh no you don't. You're not his old friend, remember? You're from another universe. Don't try to manipulate him. Uh, she, she's similar. 
Okay. The setter. I couldn't win you over on philosophy. How about pragmatism? I'm more powerful than the emissary. Than any other starborn. And you might not understand why, but I want you to succeed. You've never gotten this far before. I need to see what happens to you. Thank you. Well, can't say I didn't try. We'll settle this at the usual place. Usual place. The buried temple will be there. You're lucky I'm a man of my word. I'll see you there. Okay. Stay for a moment. You must have questions about what happens next. We won't be able to go to the buried temple right away. There are still other artifacts out there in the settled systems that haven't been gathered. You'll need to work with your colleagues in Constellation to find them. I'll meet you in orbit above the buried temple. We'll face what's there together. All the other artifacts need to be gathered before the final one will reveal itself. Uh, okay. I'll be bringing mine. The hunter will be bringing his. And you will need to bring the rest. All of the ones Constellation can find. He and I have made a number of agreements over the years, if you can even call them years at this point. We let him go. In exchange, he'll wait at the buried temple. You'll be able to prepare any way you can before then. There's always a final artifact in a specific temple. The hunter and I agreed that whomever you sided with, the other would wait there. Expect anything and everything. Other starborn, human mercenaries, and defenses, alien creatures under mind control. It's all fair game. Okay. Sounds fun. <laughs> Sounds fun. Okay, I'm carrying too much. So this is this is going towards the predestination paradox. That something must happen because it must happen, uh, which is the prime reason why it happens, and that's like. My brain hurts. Fighting alongside you is never dull. Because because that's that's uh, in in itself it's it's problematic because free will. It's it kind of nullifies the free will. What what free will will do I have if I don't have a choice? If I don't have a choice to make uh, the bad call, good and bad call. If I don't have a, like uh, even options, but is is there a free will then? And and in every case, if you are talking about free will, you are talking about chance to chance to select the bad bad outcome as well. But yeah, th this is. I'm I'm not too thrilled about this storyline. I mean it's it's kind of been there, but it now it's 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 going to close to the predestination paradox and all the all the time travel stuff and 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 Bethesda doesn't need to actually uh, tell who who put the artifacts here. Why 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 they are here? I wonder what has happened while we have been away. Yeah, okay, you have been cleaning hey, up here. I've been talking with the others, and I'd like to get everyone together to say goodbye. You know, to Sarah. Yeah.
Thank you. It wouldn't be the same without you there. I'll have everything set up in a few days. Five UD days. So let's make wait five days. What did you want? What's up? Wait until memorial. Okay, that's that's good. Good option here. Oh, right. Andrea is no longer a active company, okay. later. I thought maybe I would come up with something to say, but I've got nothing. So instead, I thought I would quote something that gave me comfort a long time ago. Is God real? The more proper question would be, is reality divine? Existence itself is a mystery which yearns to be uncovered. What is goodness but a comparison to the good? What is existence but a participation in being? For where the diversity of the universe inspires awe and wonder, it exists only in contrast to a simplicity so pure that it may only be understood as primordial and even divine. Our essence is what was imagined by its mind, but what we consider imagining and what we consider mind are in fact so far beyond our understanding that even these metaphors are like the tiny white caps on a massive searching sea. There's more, but those are the parts that speak to me the most. I, um... Thank you. I was really thoughtful, Mateo. Thank you. Does anyone else want to say anything? Say a few words. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm go to going to say Tara didn't just die. She was murdered. Thank you. If anyone else wants to say something, this is this is slightly weird because we met Sarah, who was from the different universe. Oh, ah. I hope this is all okay. <laughs> Between fixing things up and sending out messengers and getting all the paperwork done, it's not much. Good. I. Good. Sorry, if I talk any longer, I'm gonna start crying. Um, could you excuse me? I don't often speak about what I believe in. It seems so redundant with how I live. But death is one of those occasions where it's hard not to look at one. Our friend is gone. There's no afterlife or second meetings. No god in heaven that is curating a perfect ending for me. So it's up to us. 
We are what lives on. The pain of loss inspires us to greater action than that is the good that comes from it. Humanity is what truly creates our world. We are the ones that judge things to be good or evil, joyful or mournful. Let us take responsibility for it. Let us remember what we have lost. Walter, are you part of the House of Enlightenment? I never knew that. Yes, well, I like to keep some things private. Okay. You all might not like thinking about this, but when we die, everything about us breaks down, decomposes, but it's gets not eaten helping. up by insects and microbes. Or due to the lack of a biosphere, uh, we are simply carried away by space. Totally time, last thing every, anyone wants to hear in, in a funeral. Corona, or get pulled in some gravitational field and coalesce with other debris. Not comforting, huh? But I disagree. Do you know what I find uncomfortable? The thought that after I die, the universe is just going to stand still forever. Could you imagine? The fact is that the universe goes on. That life goes on. That things do not just sit still. That right there is the comfort that I need. Yeah, we die. And some people go way before they should. But the universe doesn't care. Not because it's evil, but because it's infinite, ever expanding. And who wouldn't want to be a part of infinity, even if it's just for a short while? Listen, we don't worry about ourselves before we were born, do we? Of course not. We emerge from the universe as we return to it. And for one beautiful moment, we are here together. Um. Yes, that certainly was an interesting perspective, Barrett. Anyone else? I don't believe we met. Ajay Mamasa, former chair ah, of the okay. station. New, new I wish person. the circumstances of my visit were better. Uh, she was the one Sarah spoke about. Unfortunately, this isn't the first constellation funeral I've been to. After 35 years, you say goodbye to a lot of friends. I hope you don't mind me saying, but I feel numb just thinking about it. Sarah meant the world to me. She was the future. I knew it as soon as I met her. Exactly the same as when you met her, I bet. Determined. Fearless. With just a small hint of delight on her face when she knew she was winning, eh? My only problem as a mentor was trying to convince her to be more tactful. <laughs> Those old military instincts would always get her in trouble. Yes. She could make me so angry or so happy. We used to joke that we were married. <laughs> I bet relationships in Constellation are still messy, aren't they? They're more of a family than an organization. All the former lines bleed together. It makes the losses sting harder. But I hope it means the time you had together was all the more important. That's how I like to think of it anyway. Oh, yes. I was Sebastian Bench's protege, if that gives you any idea of how long I was part of our little club. Banks. That, that's probably homage to the I am Banks full sci-fi writer. Knew him, argued with him, tried to carry on his memory when he vanished. Sebastian will be back tomorrow, we always used to say. <laughs> it reminded us that he was still here. 
in the bones of this old building. Alright. Shall we speak with everyone? Chat for a bit? Normally, I hate talking to people at funerals, but, well... You don't believe in the afterlife, do you? I mean, this might be the worst time to bring it up, but... <laughs> Serpents in praise, there's afterlife, but most are unworthy of anything but being devoured. Hmm. Funny religion. An interesting choice of words. <laughs> I suppose that's why I'm an atheist. <laughs> All this talk of death and judgment gets in the way of the real work. Well, I've taken up enough of your time. <laughs> they didn't like it. It almost feels wrong to be grieving. Selfish. No amount of tears will bring the dead back. It's just easier to feel guilty, if you'll excuse me. Mm. That, that's actually true. You know? What you're feeling right now is a chemical reaction whose evolutionary goal is promoting social cohesion. Not helping. <laughs> Never seems to work for me. No matter how many times I do this, I feel less attached, not more. Hmm. I wrote the book on them. The Ten Stages of Grief by A. Barrett. Step one used to be have a drink. <laughs> but nowadays I settle on a good chocolate bar. You know, if there's one piece of advice I can actually give you, it's that lost loved ones have a way of coming back to you. One day you'll be sweeping out some old shelf or digging through a desk and there it'll be. Some old paperweight of theirs. Or a piece of jewelry they gave you. Half jokingly. Theoretically, of course. So, there's, there's like five steps of grief, but he, he added like five more. Thanks, Barrett. That helps. You're welcome. You lot love that. I am told these types of gatherings are a sad occasion. That assumption appears to be correct. I appreciate you verifying my analysis, although I am certain my thanks will do little to improve your current psychological trauma. If you would like, though, I can add some consoling language to my programming. Very well. <laughs> okay. Did, did we talk with everyone? Hi. Is talking supposed to make us all feel better? Is that why we're all here? It's just... It doesn't change anything, does it? I just feel like I want to be a million light years away from everyone. I... want to be alone for a while, okay? Okay, so, uh... I mean, where's Andrea? Ah, and everyone else. Everyone is in mourning. I understand, but I cannot quite share in their emotion. After the shock of what happened faded, I have felt nothing else. Just a numbness. I have seen death. I have lost people I considered close. But this is... It is not the same. I cannot explain why. I am not sure I am making sense. Thank you. Is it quieter in the lodge, or is it just me? Death is a bastard. Comes for us all. You know, there's an old Aquila story. 
about two pioneers who got lost trying to find a new frontier to settle. One of them takes ill. Clear he's not gonna make it, he turns to his partner and says, Don't bury me. Let the ground take what it's due. I'd rather be a ghost chasing after you than walk through the pearly gates knowing an eternity of loneliness until you get there. Sad story, huh? You look after yourself. Okay. Drink? Pour one out to the blackest sea? Two old friends. May their ghosts go past the edges of space to the great beyond. I. Speak with everyone. Okay, there's. Oh, hi. I've lost everything. Again. It's just that I feel. Yeah, th this is new. Yeah, so she, she's taking it hard. With Sarah, it was like starting a family again. The way she'd smile at me reminded me of my mom. I missed that so much. Now she's gone. And I have to start over, like I did before. It's not the same. Sarah was starting to feel like, well, like she was my new mom. I really don't want to go through this again. It's too hard. I can't believe Sarah's gone. It's not fair. Hey, um, thanks for talking to me. I'm actually feeling a little better knowing that you care how I feel. Maybe I'm not so alone after all. 